Hi everybody, today we're going to read The Man Who Walked Between the Towers by Mordecai Gerstein. And this is just so you know, it's a true story uh, with some great illustrations. And this happened not too long ago, well for you maybe long ago, but not for me. <laughs> anyway, here we go. <clears throat> the Man Who Walked Between the Towers. Once there was two towers side by side. They were each a quarter of a mile high, 1,340 feet, the tallest buildings in New York City. A young man saw the rise into the sky, and he was a street performer. He rode unicycles, he juggled balls and fiery torches, but most of all, he loved to walk and dance on a rope he tied to two trees. He looked not at the towers, but at the space between them, and thought, what a wonderful place to stretch a rope, a wire of which to walk. Once the idea came to him, he knew he had to do it. If he saw the three balls, he had to juggle. If he saw two towers, he had to walk. That's how he was. Hadn't he danced on a wire between the steeple of the Notre Dame Cathedral above the amazed home city Paris? Why not here between these towers? Oh my gosh. Of course he knew that as a, in Paris the police and the owners of the towers would never allow it. You must be crazy, they would say. You will fall for sure. So Philippe that was the youngest young man's name, began to plan to do it secretly. The buildings were not quite finished. He thought, maybe if I dressed as a construction worker. Early on, on August evening, he and a friend entered the South Tower. They got to 440-pound reel of cable and other equipment also um into the oh, sorry, into the elevator, took it to the unfinished top ten floors, and waited till nightfall when everyone had gone. Then they carried everything up one hundred and eighty stairs to the roof. Yikers! At midnight, um, on the other towers, two more friends tied a thin, strong line to an arrow and shot it across to Philippi. 140 feet away. It missed and it landed on the ledge of 15 feet below the roof. Bad luck, thought Philippi. He crawled down to the ledge over the sparkling city and got the arrow. Let's see. To its line he tied a stronger line, which his friends pulled back to their tower. In his end, a stronger line, Felipe tied the cable on which he would walk. It was seven-eighths of an inch thick. Seven-eighths of an inch, so not even an inch. Oh, my goodness. His friends pulled the cable over to their tower, but it was so heavy that it slipped from Felipe's grip. The cable in the middle plummeted toward the street, pulling the friends on the other tower to the very edge. It must be good friends, huh? It took three hours to pull the cable back up. Frantically, as the stars faded, they tightened between the towers. It was passed on before they were ready. Felipe put on his black shirt and tights. He picked up the 28-foot balancing pole. All his life he had worked to be here and to do this. As the rising sun lit the towers, out he stepped onto the wire. Out of the very middle he walked, as if he were walking on air itself. Many winds whirled up from between the towers, and he swayed with them. He could feel the towers breathing. He was not afraid. He felt alone and happy and absolutely free. A woman coming from the subway might have been the first to see him. 
Look, someone's walking on a wire between the towers. So if I was at school, I'd turn it this way so you guys could see. <laughs> Look, you could hardly see me, this little, little dot. Everyone stopped and looked up. They gasped and stared. It was astonishing. It was terrifying and beautiful. A quarter of a mile up in the sky, someone distance dancing. Police saw it too. Officers rushed to the roofs of the towers. You're under arrest, they shouted through their bull bullhorns. Felipe turned and walked the other way. Who would come and get him? For almost an hour, back and forth, he walked and danced and ran and knelt in salute upon the wire. He lay down to rest, and the city and the harbor spread beneath him. The sky surrounded him. Seagulls flew under and over. As long as he stayed on the wire, he was free. When he felt completely satisfied, he walked back to the roof and held out his wrists for the handcuffs. They brought him to court, and the judge sentenced him to perform in the park for the children of the city. This, did, this he did happily, though during his performances some boys played on the wire and jerked it and Felipe fell. Oh, my goodness. But he caught himself. Now the towers are gone, and you might have seen that when we talked about that the other day, when we uh, celebrated Patriots Day on September 11th. But the memory of it is imprinted in the sky. The towers are still there. The part of the memory is the joyful morning of August 7th, 1974, when Felipe Petit walked between them in the air. And that's the end. So I hope you enjoyed this story. Um, we'll be doing more like this. And have a great day. Bye.